Hello guys, welcome back to Archive Ryzen. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the second part of Paradoxical Labyrinth's guide and tips. I'm gonna start from strategic preference or initial buff. Before you starting an exploration, you will need to choose some initial buff that have their own group of buff that you can notice from the symbol of its initial buff. So this initial buff can give you certain effect buff based on the initial buff you choose and you can increase the effect by keep choosing the buff that have the same symbol with the initial buff after each battle or when you are shopping. So by keep collecting the same symbol of buff with the initial buff, you can keep stacking the initial buff effect. For example, in this attack percent buff, after you manage to collect 3 buff that have this symbol, you will reach the first upgrade of this attack percent buff that can increase your attack percent by 30%. And if you manage to collect 6 of the same buff, you will unlock the second upgrade of this attack percent buff that can increase attack percent by 60%. And also, the last one is you will need 12 of the same buff that have this symbol to unlock the last upgrade of this attack percent buff. So make sure to prioritize to choose the buff that have the same symbol with your initial buff in order to enhance the initial buff effect. But also make sure the buff you choose is also useful for your character. And now I'm gonna give you some guide about which initial buff is best for which operative. But to make it more easier to explain, I'm gonna divide some main DPS operative into some classification. So there is three classification for our currently existed main DPS. That is hybrid damage dealer, skill dependent operative, and shooting dependent operative. From its name, you can already guess that. For hybrid damage dealer, both of the operative shooting damage and skill damage are almost equal or highly contribute for their total sustained DPS. While for skill dependent operative, the total sustained DPS from the operative are mostly come from their skill damage. So that means their skill DPS can contribute a large amount of DPS than their shooting damage to the total sustained DPS. While for the shooting dependent operative, their total sustained DPS mostly come from their shooting damage. So their skill damage can only contribute a small amount of DPS or not contribute at all to their total sustained DPS. So the shooting dependent operative mostly have a skill to amplify their shooting damage to increase their fire rate or only can deal a small amount of damage like for example to entrap the enemy or a crowd control skill. So for the operative that include as a hybrid damage dealer is Chunxing Arterial Cloud, Lifer Wild Hunt, Marian Swift, and Acacia Redacted. Well, for Chunxing Arterial Cloud and Lifer Wild Hunt is true that their shooting damage and skill damage can contribute almost 50-50 for their total sustained DPS. While for Marian Swift and Acacia Redacted, their skill damage can contribute maybe lower than 30% for their total sustained DPS, but at least their skill damage is still worth to invest if you want to choose some buff. While for skill dependent operative, the operative that include in here is Haru Absconditus and Fritia Haas. Both of them have a insanely high skill damage, especially when they are in their ultimate state. While for the rest is include into shooting dependent operative. For example, Fanny Cornet, Fanny Lionheart, Katia Klein, Yao Winter Saltis, Moxir Meow, and etc. Extra. Like you can see, Katia's standard skill can only increase her fire rate and didn't deal any skill damage at all. While for Fanny Coronet, besides her standard skill can increase her fire rate, her standard skill can also deal skill damage in a small scale AoE. So most of the time, her standard skill damage unable to reach enemy to deal damage. This classification is still subjective opinions from me, so if you have a better classification or you disagree with my opinions, you can also state your opinions in the comment section. And now I'm gonna explain the strategic preference or initial buff, which buff is the best for which operative. Let's start with high focus buff that can increase attack percent. So this attack percent buff is the most universal buff that can almost apply for all operative. But the operative that can highly take advantage of this attack percent buff is hybrid damage dealer. While for the second is skill dependent operative and the third is shooting dependent operative. Why? 
because mostly attack percent can increase both of your shooting damage and your skill damage. For hybrid damage dealer and skill dependent operative, they will get double effect from this attack percent. While for shooting dependent operative, can only get half benefit from this attack percent buff. But that doesn't mean this buff is not good for them. While for this high focus buff derivative, some of the buff can also buff the skill damage. That's why, even in this buff derivative, some of them can also give advantage for hybrids and skill damage dealer operative. While for the second initial buff, the refined technique that can increase skill damage, the one that can highly benefit from this buff is of course will be skill dependent operative. While for the second will be hybrid damage dealer operative. Because this initial buff and its derivative can mostly focus giving buff to their skill damage, skill cooldown, skill energy regeneration, and ultimate energy gain. That's why if you want to use skill dependent operative or hybrid damage dealer, choosing this buff is very good for your operative. But keep in mind never use this initial buff for shooting dependent operative because shooting dependent operative are highly depend on their shooting damage so increasing their skill damage won't give a high benefit for them. And also for Katya claim that her standard skill didn't deal any damage, increasing skill damage won't give any benefit to her standard skill. Increasing skill damage only can improve her support skill and ultimate skill damage. Well for the third one, Rapid Storm that can increase fire rate. This one is very good for shooting dependent operative. While for the second one will be hybrid damage dealer. And the third one will be skill dependent operative. Because this initial buff and its derivative can highly increase your fire rate and also giving some aptitude damage or DOT for your shooting damage. And the one that can highly trigger this DOT and aptitude damage will be shooting dependent operative and hybrid damage dealer. While for skill dependent operative can also get benefit from this. But this initial buff are bad for Katia Clan. Because whenever you use Katia Clan standard skill, her standard skill fire rate is fixed. So you can't improve her standard skill fire rate by choosing this initial buff. Also this one are not very good for sniper operative. Because currently our sniper main DPS are bolt action sniper user that have a very low fire rate and usually we always trying to ignore the bolt action animation or their fire rate by keep using their standard skill after each shot. That's why this initial buff are not that suitable for sniper operative. And the next one is wind drill that can increase crit damage amplifier. This one are very good for shooting dependent operative. And for the second one will be hybrid damage dealer. And for the third one will be skill dependent operative. This increased crit damage amplifier buff are very good for operative that use a high crit damage weapon. For example, bolt action sniper. And also this initial buff derivative mostly synergy with operative that can deal a very solid damage in shot even though they have a slow fire rate. But that doesn't mean for other operative that have a fast fire rate can't get any benefit from this. So you can still use other operative that have a fast fire rate can still get high benefit from this crit damage amplifier buff and its derivative. While well, for the next one will be Unseen Clip that can increase magazine capacity. This buff will also be very suitable for shooting dependent operative. And for the second one will be Hybrid Damage Dealer. While well, for the third one will be Skill Dependent Operative. And for this initial buff and its derivative are highly synergy for fast fire rate operative. For example, Assault Rifle user or Submachine Gun user. Because most of the buff are require the operative to continuously shooting. But this buff are not very good for Katia Klein because Katia Klein is a crossbow weapon user that already have a unlimited magazine capacity. And for the last one is Iron Defense that can increase shield acquisition efficiency. This initial buff are only good for Cyrus the Golden Fist. No, I'm just kidding. This initial buff and its derivative is the second universal buff after the attack percent buff. So that means it can be good for any type operative. But because some of its derivative can increase skill damage, 
or final skill damage. That's why the operative that can highly get benefit from this buff. The first will be hybrid damage dealer, while for the second will be skill dependent operative, and for the third one will be shooting dependent operative. Because you can see that most of this buff derivative can give increased damage or final damage that can improve both of shooting damage and skill damage. That make this initial buff and its group are very good for hybrid damage dealer. I think that's all the explanation for initial buff or strategic preference. And the next one is I'm gonna explain about some buff that sometimes you are confused about its effect. So the first one is if you find some buff that can increase damage deal or final damage, this kind of buff is the best buff that you can get. Because this buff can increase your final damage for both your shooting damage and your skill damage. While for buff that can increase attack percent, it can apply for both of your shooting damage and skill damage if your skill damage is based on attack stat because some operative have their skill based on their HP or anything else. For example, Maxir Shadows, most of her skill are based on her max HP. While for buff that can increase elemental damage, this one also very good because it can increase both of your shooting damage and your skill damage. As long as your weapon element and skill element are the same as the element that mentioned by the buff. While for ballistic damage, it's only applied for your shooting damage, that means it doesn't affect your skill damage at all. And for this ballistic damage, sometimes the buff are saying that it can increase standard ballistic damage, Sometimes the buff said it can increase ADS ballistic damage and sometimes it only said it can increase ballistic damage. For standard ballistic damage means the buff effects can only increase your shooting damage when you are shooting in a hip shot or without aiming. While for the ADS ballistic damage, the ADS in here means aim downside. So that means the buff effect only active when you are shooting the enemy while aiming. So if you are shooting without aiming or hip shot, the buff won't give any improvement to your shooting damage. But if the buff said it can increase ballistic damage, either you shooting without aiming or hip shot, or you shooting while aim down sight, this buff will keep active to improve your shooting damage. While for the last one is increase skill damage buff. That means this buff only increase your skill damage without improving your shooting damage at all. So. It can increase your standard skill, support skill, or ultimate skill as long as your skill can deal damage. So if your skill only amplify your damage or increase fire rate that doesn't deal damage at all, the skill won't get any benefit from the buff that can increase skill damage. For example, Katya Clean standard skill that can increase fire rate, buff that can increase skill damage won't give any benefit to Katya Clean standard skill. But this kind of buff can at least improve the support skill and ultimate skill damage. Okay, I think that's all about the buff explanation. Now I'm gonna explain about labyrinth key and trade level. So after I observing some of my deduction or exploration result, I make this conclusion for labyrinth key and trade level. When you're about to start a deduction, you will get initial labyrinth key based on the difficulty you choose. For easy and normal difficulty, you will get 100 initial labyrinth key. While for hard difficulty, you will get 60 initial labyrinth key. But in danger difficulty, you will not get any initial labyrinth key at all. But you can get initial labyrinth key or increase your initial labyrinth key by upgrading the first goal in the logic research. The higher you upgrade this node, the more initial labyrinth key you will get when you starting a deduction. And also for the labyrinth key that you can achieve after encounter, for extreme crisis is the best encounter if you want to get more labyrinth key because extreme crisis always give you 120 labyrinth key per encounter. While for battle supply encounter can give you about 90 until 180 labyrinth key per encounter. So this one can give you a lot of labyrinth key but it's kinda RNG based on your luck. While for combat encounter can give you about 30 to 50 labyrinth key in a lower floor and it can give you 60 labyrinth key per fight in a higher floor. 
But if you have to choose between better supply or combat encounter, I guess choosing combat encounter is better for you. Because combat encounter not only can give you labyrinth key after battle, it can also give you some buff to choose. While well, for the third way to increase your labyrinth key is by discard some individual buff. So if you didn't have any good buff for you to choose, or you have an useless individual buff, you can discard the individual buff to gain some labyrinth key. By click the individual buff and click confirm, and after that you can click discard option over here to discard the individual buff. So you can get some labyrinth key by discarding the individual buff based on the buff rarity. For 1 star buff, it will give you only 20 labyrinth key. While for 5 star buff, will give you 120 labyrinth key. While for buff exchange in the shopping center, a 2 star buff will cost you 90, 3 star buff will cost you 120, 4 star buff will cost you 240, and 5 star buff will cost you 360. So make sure to collect a large amount of labyrinth key at first before you go to the shopping center, like about 600 or 700 labyrinth key before you go to the shopping center. So you can buy 3 or more buff in one go. Well for the threat level, there is 4 threat level that can increase the enemy HP, defense and attack while also giving buff to the enemy boss that you will encounter in the extreme crisis. For the first threat level, you will reach the first threat level if your threat value reach 20 points. You will reach second threat level if your threat value reach 40 points. And you will reach third level if your threat value reach 70 points. And fourth level if your threat value reach 100 points. While for the percentage enemy HP defense and attack increment, the first level will increase 3%, the second level can increase 5%, third level can increase 10%, and the fourth level can increase 15%. While for the threat value increment per encounter, for the combat encounter, can increase about 4 to 5 threat value per encounter. And sometimes you will get hit by a large amount of threat value, like about 11 threat value, if you are unlucky. This is a rare case when the RNG guard wanna punish you. While well, for the extreme crisis, after completing extreme crisis, will give you 4 threat value in a fixed amount. While well, for supply and safe house, can give you about 11 to 16 threat value per encounter. So in order to suppress your threat value, it is best for you to keep choosing the extreme crisis encounter. While for the second priority will be combat encounter if you didn't have extreme crisis to choose. So in case you want to complete this deduction mission sooner rather than later, first you can upgrade the logistic enhancement node in the logic research to level 4 because we will need both of the EMP generator provided by this logistic enhancement node. Well, for the second one, always remember to use your EMP generator effectively in the right time. Because using EMP generator can reduce the trade value by 10 points. But this item can only decrease the trade value no lower than the minimum of current threat level. For example, in this picture, my threat value already reached 88 points. That means it's already reached the checkpoint in the third threat level. So if I about to use this EMP generator twice time in order to reduce 20 points, instead of coming down from 88 points to 68 points, it will only stop in the 70 point threat value. That is what this sentence means. So always remember to use your EMP generator before your threat value reach the upper checkpoint. You will need to upgrade this lucky stealth knot as high as possible as you can because this knot can give you a certain chance to not increase your threat value at all. So the higher you can upgrade this knot, the higher the chance you can effect the threat value increment. While for the third one, you will need to upgrade this stealth combat in order to reduce the threat value increment per each encounter. This one, you will need to upgrade as high as possible in order to suppress the threat value increment per encounter. And also the next one, you will need to play in a hard difficulty so you can complete that deduction mission more easier. And the next tip is always prioritize choosing the extreme crisis encounter if the extreme crisis encounter is available and choose combat encounter for the second priority. 
and avoid getting in safe house, better supply, and shopping encounter at all. Because three of them can give you a large amount of trade value per encounter. Just get in the better supply encounter if you don't have other choice. Because better supply encounter can give you at least the lower trade value among them. I think these are the tips to complete the sooner rather than later mission. And also that's all about the explanation for the Labyrinth Key and Trade Level Mechanism. The next one will be Supplies Explanation. So currently there is 6 supplies that you can obtain either by upgrading some not in the logistic research or find them in the Better Supply Encounter. That is First Aid Kit, EMP Generator, Commander Card, Portable Jammer, and Reboot Chip. 5 of them is a manual use item that you can use anytime when the conditions are met. For first aid kit, I already explained in the previous part, but for the EMP generator, I already explained it before. And for the commander card, you can on you can use it to refresh the supply in the shopping center. But for the portable jammer, you can use it after you getting hit by a tactical interference in order to remove one tactical interference. But if you're getting hit by 2 or 3 tactical interference, using portable jammer will only randomly remove one of them, so you can't choose which one you want to remove. While for the rebuild chips, you can only use this item when one of your operative is down, in order to revive the operative and give them 30% HP. While for the last one is recon receiver, this item is automatically used items that will protect you from one tactical interference that about to hit you. So if any tactical interference that about to hit you, this one will protect you from that negative buff and notify you that the recon receiver already got used to protect you from the tactical interference. But in case if you can't find any items or didn't have any of this item, you can visit the safe house instead. Because in the safe house, I always have the team race as a first aid kit alternative and remove disruption as a portable jammer alternative and if you are lucky when you visit a safe house that have a shopping center you will also encounter rebuild consciousness that can become rebuild chip alternative in order to revive any down operative but encounter rebuild consciousness is kinda rng based that have a high chance encounter from egg to 22 floor so if any of your operative are down after an encounter, you don't need to reset all the exploration. You can keep trying to survive until you find any safe house that have rebuild consciousness in order to revive your down operative. For team rest and rebuild consciousness can only recover 30% of your operative HP when you use them. But you can upgrade the recovery percentage from the logic research by upgrading the healing enhancement node. And also you can upgrade rebuild discount to reduce the labyrinth key cost for rebuild consciousness. This all about the supply explanation. I think this all the guide and tips for paradoxical labyrinth second part. I hope you guys can survive and enjoy playing this paradoxical labyrinth. Just don't speed run playing this paradoxical labyrinth to max out until level 60. Because if you speed running this paradoxical labyrinth, you can no longer enjoy every moment when playing this paradoxical labyrinth. And you will only end up in level 60 with regret. I think that's all from me. If you like my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.